This is Hog Farmer Jeff of the Hog Farmers. And before you listen to that team from D.C. with Caleb and Kadar, presented by the Red Zone in the Lab, please check out our website at hogfarmerscharity.org. We are starting a Gaming Go-Karts for Children's Hospital campaign with a goal of $7,000 because kids deserve a chance to be kids. The Hog Farmers would like to purchase two gaming carts for two children's hospitals. Being in the hospital can be scary and isolating. Video games bring joy and are a source of relief. Please help restore a sense of normalcy in for children during their hospital stays. We're helping kids by improving the patient's experience. It's a great way to socialize. 65% of gamers play with friends. It provides a sense of adventure, and sometimes healthcare staff even use it to assist with treatments. The cart is made up of hospital-grade construction and materials, 24-inch monitor with speakers, and secured storage bin and components. And please show some love by subscribing to the podcast on YouTube and visit www.redzoneinthelab.com. And as always, hell to the commanders. It's going to get cooked, but in a nice way. Man, I can't wait to see Caleb get cooked. It's going to be hilarious. (laughs) Yo, Caleb is going to get cooked, but in a nice way. Man, I can't wait to see Caleb get cooked. It's going to be hilarious. Dar can hold his own, so it's going to be a challenge. Good luck. Hey, do you have you heard of that team, Detroit Caleb and Kadal? Tap in today. I got Caleb cooking. New podcast alert. Podcast alert. I'm trying to figure out how Caleb like like the Mavs, but hate the Wizards, man. They both trash, man. Get out of here, Caleb man. And a podcast? Man, that's the sports gumbo we never knew we knew. <laughs> Hey, yo, Kadar Cookie, Caleb, yo. Man, they got to let Caleb cook, man. It ain't his fault. Luca and Kyrie couldn't make it to the playoffs. I'm looking forward to this. This this is going to be a goodie right here. Two of the young bucks at a fan base, you know what I'm saying? Very Caleb informed. or Kadar, who's going 1-0? So Caleb this and Kadar are having a podcast together? Man. Who's going to catch up and do his thing? But, man, <laughs> y'all got to see this or hear this. Or both. It's Caleb be crazy. is wild. So with Kadara, it should bring a little balance. Yeah, it should be entertaining. This about to be a goodie. I gotta rock with my boy Kadar. Caleb in the mad and takes his trip at that. Kadar and Caleb <laughs> talking ball. It's like Kendrick and Drake talking music. Man, this is gonna be crazy. Let's go. Now, how you think Caleb gonna be though if he get too mad, man? I ain't trying to hear that nightstick come out. <laughs> it's nightstick time. Uh, what's up, y'all? Welcome to our podcast, That Team from D.C. I'm your guy, Caleb, my boy, Kadar, right here. How you doing, man? What's happening, man? Episode one. Glad to be here. Big things planned. You know, hope y'all yes, tune sir. in. Welcome to the highly anticipated season one of That Team from D.C. with Caleb and Kadar, presented by Red Zone in the Lab podcast. We in the city and we chopping it up about the commanders and all DC sports. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Red Zone in the Lab and visit our website to subscribe to all our podcast platforms at www.redzoneinthelab.com. And gang, and let's get it. Well, let's start. So, what DC means to me, uh, it's home. For me, uh, grew up here all my life. Uh, um, love almost every sports aspect of the area, except for the Wizards. But we're going to get to that later. But it was, you know, a lot of culture here. A lot of um, memories I have personally um, in the D.C. area. Um, really miss it a lot. But, uh, yeah, no, D.C. is uh, very important to me and the city and what it represents and what each team represents what about you Kadar? yeah man i mean it's one of the few things we might you know agree on but you hit the nail on the head i think dc is home uh it's very relatable and what dc means to me um you know it's just diversity and culture you know i think you kind of nailed some of it um but you know the people the food the energy the music 
I don't think there's anything that beats it. You know, we have a very elite community and uh, metropolitan area. So I think a lot of people, you know, have this place as a site to visit someday if they haven't been. And, you know, they hold it to a very high regard. So, you know, D.C. is a place that, you know, means a lot to everybody that's a part of it. Agree, agree. Yeah, man. Um, forgot about the food too. You already, you already know about that. You know, you got the curry, uh, you got the bread, chili ball, you got everything, man. So, yeah, man. you know, yeah, the 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 food, the food be hitting. The food, the food be hitting. But you gotta have that mumbo sauce. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, well, one thing you know, I do like about the DC area. It's very um, it's a lot of diversity. Um, really, uh, a lot of people. Um, you know, tour in the area. Especially um, me personally, I'm a photographer. So when I go out, you know, do my thing, you know, you see a lot of different cultures. You see a lot of different people. Uh, a lot of people are actually moving in that area to just, you know, get a better life. Um, and it's expensive to live there too, as well. That's one, that's one kind that a lot of people have about the area. But yeah, no, um, it's a great area. Great area. Yeah, can't, knock can't knock it. But um, you know, just a little bit about uh, both of us. You know, um, could all you want to go first? You know. Yeah, man. So about me, um, you know, I am from Silver Spring. So right outside D.C., um, I'm a teacher. So I give back by trying to give an experience to the youth that, you know, a lot of people would love to have. You know, thinking back, a lot of people really don't know, um, you know, who those educators are, um, people that look like me, people that identify like me. Um, one of the questions I was asked when I was a child um, was just who meant a lot to you, you know, from the world of education. And that was something that I was blessed to have. Um, but, you know, I know that a lot of people that come from many different places um, who identify just like me, you know, might not be able to answer that question well. So, you know, just being a trusted adult, um, you know, a mentor, a role model for, you know, people that might not have it is why, you know, I go about the way I go about things. But, you know, hobbies, you know, obviously, um, you know, I'm into sports, uh, DC fanatic, you know, commanders, wizards, nationals, uh, capitals, you name it. So um, that's just a little bit about me. But, you know, go ahead, Caleb. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, 27 years old um, from the um, DMV area. Um, was born in Alexandria, Virginia, moved to uh, Upper Marlboro, PG County area, and I've been lived at that same house for like 20 plus years. Uh, recently, uh, in June, I moved down to Georgia. So it's a big, it's a difference. Um, smaller town, smaller area, not a lot of people, but you know, it's, I still got to get used to it. But um, love sports, um, of course, Commanders fan. Um, love but the why, But why aren't you a Wizards fan, dog? We got to get you. So, you know. so let me, I, I'll just break it down. Um, growing up, uh, going to my friend's house, I saw Gilbert Arenas, you know, uh, Karan Butler, Antoine Jameson, Brandon Haywood. You, you know, you, the, those were good players. No, no hate. Great, great players. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, not a bad team. And then, you know, you started picking up, you know, when uh, they had John Wall and Bradley Bill. I'm like, oh, this team could be something. But I never really – fell in love with him, you know, but like I told you before, Kadar, I'm already stressed about the commanders and the wizards. If I, if I'm a fan of them, they're going to stress me out too. I don't need to be mad at, at two teams all the time, but I do love the nationals. I know they struggling a little bit uh, the past year, you know, with the trades and everything. Um, and the capitals, I'm always going to stand beside, you know, over he, yeah, he a top five hockey player in the past uh, 20 years, in my opinion. You know, he 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, that, he's, uh, he's the greatest DC athlete as far as I'm concerned currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nah, yeah, no pushback on that for me. No, no pushback on that for me. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I've always been a bit advocated for sports. Um um, I'm also a photographer. Y'all go check out my page. Y'all follow me on Twitter for those who haven't followed me. Um uh, I am a um, big on that. I'm a five-time public photographer, so you know it's it's a lot of work. It's not as easy as people think. It's not just clicking a button. You know, it's it's a 
you got to have the eye for it. You got to have the creativity, of course. Um, you got to have the uh, consistency too. Um, it's it's not easy as what uh, people think, but um, no, man. This you is do a lot of good work, man. You know, you capture moments and I think, you know, pictures and videos, you know, those are things that last a lifetime. So appreciate you, you know, man. keep appreciate doing your thing, man. And you know, that. everybody that's watching, man, tap in and go and support the boy Caleb, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Um, but, you know, we um, both young people, you know, I'm 26, you're 27. Uh, our road to, you know, being DC fans, you know, of the commanders, you know, I think, is very unique and we should definitely talk about that. Um, yeah. One thing I want to add though, is like, you know, one of the things that you mentioned with the wizards, you know, the commander stressing you out, you know, you don't want to add to that stress by being, you know, uh, a DC fan for some of the other sports. But I think, you know, it's going to make it more fulfilling someday. You know, when you see your team go ahead and, uh, you know, win I, that I understand. I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand. It's so, the man himself, Caleb, why did you become a Commanders fan? Uh, oof, um, 2005 is uh, when they had their first playoff win in a while. That was the last time they had their playoff win. Um, so uh, that was important to me. Um, loved the team ever since. Uh, I've, uh, as a young fan, I've been through hell. Been through hell and high water um, throughout middle school. Uh, high school, you know, it's it was stressful times, man. It, it, it was stressful times. You know, you got to go with the ups and downs. It's a roller coaster ride. Um, so it's it, it's difficult being, you know, a fan when when you're around our age, especially when you're a '90s baby. Um, when you got talk to the older people, most of them, you know, and we're gonna talk about this part in their future. Some of them are tuned out with the team. Um, they're just tired. Uh, but for me, I am a loyal person when when i when i love a team i'm gonna stick by them i'm gonna defend them but i'm also gonna criticize them when they're doing the right and the wrong but you know i can also be um a little biased towards them as well but sometimes that's you got to really sit back and analyze and it's like i got to be honest about this team um sometimes that's what you got to do but uh, i've been a fan ever since um 2012 year great year 2015 year when we had a top five offense in a league, it was a bad defense, but we were putting up points. I, I love that era of that team. Um, I was representing, you know, and, and it sucked in that playoff game, but you know, it, stuff like that happens. But I've been a fan of this team for so long and uh, I'm a die fan of this team. What about you, man? Yeah, man. So going back to when I was in elementary school, man, I remember that Monday night game in Dallas where Santana Moss go ahead, uh, touchdown to win the game. You know, two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Mark Brunel was the QB. But I couldn't even really enjoy that as a fan back then because I wasn't even really that big of a football fan, I'll be honest. Mm. Um, but, you know, that's what kind of got me into, uh, you know, being a Washington Redskins fan then. And, you know, my dad also, um, you know, my dad, he's kind of a hop, not a hop on, but, He's the most casual football fan that you'll ever see. But he did have the Redskins on, so I'd always tune in. But then that year when we had Jason Campbell uh, with um, Jim Zorn, not Jim Zorn, that's the following year, uh, Joe Gibbs, where he got hurt uh, and dislocated his kneecap, that was the year where I was really locked in into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was yeah. at that game. That was the first football game I went to. So. Oh. Um, we went on that four game winning streak with Todd went, Collins. Yep, I remember. And then yeah. we went to Seattle, you know, had a tough game, but that's you know, really how I became a fan. So, um, yeah, speak, I've been locked in since. Speaking of that, um, that run that four, uh, I was actually with my grandmother I was watching that Vikings game with Clinton Porter was going crazy. Clinton Porter was going crazy in that game, yeah, man. But that I, was I, also the year Sean Taylor, you know, yeah, yeah, passed yeah, away, was, man. I yeah. rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. And I mean, I was actually in middle school. I was in music class when that happened. And my piano teacher was like, oh, my gosh, he got shot. I was like, oh, dang. So, yeah, it, it, it hurts to this day. But, you know, we still got to, you know, remember him, you know, honor him. Um, but you also, we enjoy the memories of him as far as, you know, who he was as a person. Um, and his play on the football field and how he impacted the whole city. Yeah. His impact was huge, and it'll live on forever, bro, with this community and this family. Yeah. 
That's a fact. That's a fact, man. So, uh, what is your state on the Nationals, Wizards, and the Capitals? So, we can start with, you know, we can start with the Wizards first. Let, let, let's start with the Wizards. We in basketball season. And, 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 and for those who don't know, I am a Mavericks fan. I do love Luka. Uh, Luka is my favorite player. I started being a Mavericks fan because uh, Dirk Nowitzki is actually my favorite player of all time. Yeah, I know it's weird, but. Um, he is Imagine mine. a Washington fan supporting <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> hey, man, look. Hey, y'all might not want to agree with Caleb at this point, <laughs> man. This is the part where you just agree with me the whole way. But state of the Wizards, man, is terrible. I'll be honest with you. We have no direction, um, you know, until we commit to a full rebuild at this particular time. Um, I don't really see things getting better just because we are spending a lot of cap room on – players that aren't contributing to winning. And it isn't to say that we have losing players. Um, I just think with what we're doing um, with this roster and the structure of this particular team, it's just not working and it's time to move on. Um, The Nationals, um, I think they're in a very similar situation to us. Um, Once the ownership situation gets stabilized, um, I think that's when we'll get a clear picture on where uh, they head. And then the Capitals... Um, you know, Alex Ovechkin is trying to go and break that record for goals scored all time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we want to see that happen in D.C. And, you know, hopefully, you know, when they get more depth at, you know, key positions like the wings and, you know, mm-hmm. defender. Yeah. Um, you know, they'll do better things, especially with uh, getting more younger players. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, you're spot on. Um one thing that I, I do love, um, especially for the Nationals and the Capitals, they, they at least got a championship, you know, for the, within the past five years. I mean, so did the Mystics. Mm-hmm. The Mystics got a got a ring. And don't sleep on the D.C. Defenders, man. XFL, yeah. Yeah, first the year, man. They go yeah. ahead and win the chip. Yeah. So, oh, man. Who said D.C. But, can't be a title town? Yeah. But when it comes, and I'm a I'm – a, I don't. I try not to troll about the Wizards, Kadar, but Kayla be really getting under my skin, so that's why I say what I say sometimes. But if I'm being honest, um, I'm looking at if I'm being for real and I'm like being so serious, like it's y'all just need to rebuild, man. Just yeah. just, just just start over, like and and it's okay to start over. I mean, look, look what the Magic is doing. Look look what the Pistons are doing. Um, like they they got some good young talent over there. You look at um, what Paulo uh, is doing over there. Um, I forgot what the other guy that they have, but but they got they got some they got some young cats over there that can play. Um, yeah. I've always said that y'all should have traded Bill a long time ago. You know, it's but it's it's kind of tough when you committed almost a half a billion dollars to one player throughout a course of like five six years. Like it's I don't get it, but it's neither here or there. So it is what it is. It's okay. It's okay, Kadar. It's all right. It's all right. But um, yeah. So look, man, this this DC area, they got some they got some championships, like you said before. It's not like all teams is just bad. It's just, they go into a rough patch, but then some people are surprised about, you know, the sports in this area. Yeah. And you know, I'm always going to be tuned in to what's going on. So, you know, if y'all watching, feel free to, watch, you know, reach out to me. You know, Caleb isn't doing it right by supporting the Dallas Mavericks. But, you know, look, the man, Wizards look, and, I, you know, the Nats. I understand. The Caps. We had a bad – wasn't a good season. I understand, Kadar. It's, it's okay. We had a bad season. I'm not going to say this, that that Mavericks team is perfect either. They, they're they horrible on defense. They're, yeah. they're god-awful. So, yeah. And we all see all. Hi, I'm Christian Miles native Washingtonian and real estate agent servicing the Washington metropolitan area. I started my career as an investor and later transitioned to the residential side. I really wanted to leave the investor side because I wanted to connect with people. Building relationships is important to me. I understand the buying and selling process can be challenging. I get it, I've been there. I'm a mom, wife, friend, and neighbor. I absolutely love helping families and connecting with people. Going through the home buying and selling process is stressful enough. When working with me, I make it fun. 
As a realtor, I think it's important to be able to connect with you. Every detail is important no matter how small. Let me take care of the heavy lifting while you focus on the joys of finding a new home. Something I live by, people may not remember what you said, but they will always remember how you made them feel. With me, it's an experience. Man, let's get back to ball, man. Football. So this is a football podcast, and you know we got two young opinions. You know, you and me, um, and we're trying to kind of give our say, our perspective, and what we believe this team should be, right? But as far as this podcast goes, that team from DC, what are your goals for this particular podcast? Uh, I want us. I want us to get out the young fan perspective of how we feel about the team. Yeah, I mean, in these spaces, you know, on Twitter, uh, there's a lot of people who it's nothing wrong with that. It's older people, but I respect that. I, I respect everybody's opinion. I mean, I disagree, but I want to get it from a certain standpoint where it's a different generation kind of, and we want to spit actual facts. Like we're not here about trolling. We're not making a joke. I mean, we make, we may make a joke every now and then, but we're really sitting down and we're analyzing stuff and we're really trying to, you know, come to a consensus of where this team needs to be at a certain time frame. Um, we're going to definitely gonna be talking about that, um, but it's mainly just a young fan perspective. Uh, we're going to have guests on here. Um, we're also going to be me and Kadar just, you know, just having fun, man. And we talking ball, like that's what we're going to do. Yeah, man. Um, I think we definitely have a role in being the voice for a lot of fans. Um, we communicate and uh, engage with a lot of people on Twitter and social media. So, um, you know, us also watching the games and being two intelligent football minds, um, you know, just being knowledgeable about the area, but then also the team and what the team needs from a fan perspective, I think is going to go a long way in just, you know, this podcast and just, you know, being um, somebody that's unbiased, right? Like we're going to be objective, but, you know, we're going to critique fairly. Like we're not going to be out of pocket. We're not going to attack, uh, you know, the yeah, way some of, of these fans on Twitter, you know, might attack <laughs> people, but yeah, you know, yeah. Black, but, you know, it's, it's a little flavor for your ear, man, you know, and I think the community needs that. And that's why this podcast, I feel like, has the potential to do really big things. And it's only episode one, man. You know, it's only yeah. going to get better for us. It is. It is. It's going to get real spicy in here. It's going to get a little spicy. But, you know, it's all about the respect at the end of the day. I respect this guy next to me, man. He's a, He knows what he's talking about, man, and, and vice versa. Um, Yeah. But um, so let's get into this. Who do you want the new owner to be, Kadar? Let's let's talk about it. Who who who? I mean, it's not really many choices if we keep it honest. But you know, after the reports today about you know Bezos not um, putting it in the bid, which you know I kind of saw coming. If you weren't in these spaces, Kadar, I've been um, not banging my fist on the table kind of thing, but I just kind of felt like he don't really care. He don't really yeah. want us. Yeah, I, I I had that type of feeling. He was looking into it, of course, but. At the end of the day, I just thought like this guy don't this guy don't really want us, man. He's just he's just circling around, just seeing what what's up. But you know, how do you feel? I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't really want Jeff Bezos uh, to be the owner, just because I felt like just all the things that you're saying. I never really felt like he ever cared. Um, you know, I felt like this was just a business move for him. Um, so I'm happy to hear that you know, he's not going forward with, you know, putting in a bid, but um, I guess because of the um, just the news that's been out, I mean, Josh Harris uh, with the Magic Johnson, you know, being a potential minority owner, Magic's won everywhere he's been. So, you know, I'd like to see him, you know, bring some of that success to DC and the Washington commanders. But for me, um, just the owner, what I want the owner to be is somebody that cares about just fan engagement, and, you know, wants to put a winning product out on the field and mm. lets the football people do their job. I don't want anybody to come in and, you know, have an ego and, you know, try to step overstep boundaries and, you know, do something that isn't really 
you know, in their repertoire. Like I want somebody that, you know, understands the area, um, somebody that cares about what the fans think and isn't just, you know, trying to fill seats, right? Because that comes with winning. If we're winning games and, you know, the fan experience is great, then you're going to fill seats and then that's good for business. You know, the two things are tied together. So if we can get somebody that, you know, is knowledgeable about the practices that they're doing and, you know, really cares about the fans, then yeah. I think we all win at the end of the day. Of course. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's no question, bro. Um, <laughs> you basically been saying the same stuff I've been saying. Like, that's that's all I care about. Um Especially when the point that you said about Magic always winning where he goes, like he he literally has, like he he's brought superstars. Look at the Dodgers. Look at the Lakers. Look at the um, he just won with a soccer team recently. Yeah, so, the Galaxy. Yeah. Why why would you not want that here? Like I, I get the money aspect, and you know, money is great. You know, money is when you have a lot of money that that comes along with a lot of stuff. Uh, but yeah, man, I I just want somebody who's genuine now i know they say owners typically aren't good people um or they're they're bad which which is is true there's there's some skeletons in, in certain closets yes um but when it comes to sports and when it comes to the community and when you're incorporating everything together and then it comes out to um a positive outcome that's what matters to me um because Magic hit the nail on the head when he said, you know, we only not care about what's on the field, but we care about investing in the community, investing in the D.C. area, you know, um, getting the fan support uh, back to this area. Um, so they need to get this deal done. Get it done. If you hear me, Dan, get it done, please. And please before draft day, that'd be huge. If, yeah, that that would be huge. But it, and Kadar, like they've always told us, this is going to be a roller coaster anyway. I, I'm not surprised with all this stuff. It's been very, very tiresome, and it's been very, very a little stressful for some people. So, as young people, Caleb, you know, we talk about or they've talked about the history a lot, and you know, I love that because you know I wouldn't want to be a fan of a team that has a poor history because then you know the product on the field. Yeah. With I think no history to support the future, you know, isn't good. Right. But yeah. if we can get a rich future, you know, I think that'll start with a good owner. And, I think the know, tide is changing, though, Kadar. I, I, I honestly believe it. everything is trending toward towards a direction where there's some light at the end of the tunnel, yeah. in, in my opinion. But, yeah, let's talk about the state of the team. How you feel about this team and where they are now? Are they trending upwards, neutral? Or they're trading downwards. So, you know, you want uh you can start off with R if you want to. Um, I think objectively speaking, it's really tough to really yeah, kind of judge that. And I want to be optimistic. Um, they haven't given me any reason uh to be pessimistic as far as just their goal of trying to build a winning football team. I think some of the moves that they made, bringing in football people and people that care about fan engagement and um, just the um, improvement of the culture that they're trying to change, you know, from the past regimes, I think has been positive. You know, I think Jason Wright's doing a great job. Um, you know, Ron Rivera, you know, it's been kind of mixed, but they had the right idea bringing him in. And the one thing that I do like is the fact that they're willing to stick with him versus, you know, trying to play musical chairs and just move on without giving him a fair chance. And I like how they're not using him uh, from an organizational standpoint as a scapegoat, like mm -hmm. they've done in the past to kind of uh, put the problems on, you know, one person like him. Um, yeah. So I think we have a very good roster. Our roster has, very, you know, a lot of talent at key positions and we have room to improve uh, through the draft and, you know, free agency in the future. And I think once we establish who the owner is, um, you know, what the owner wants for the football team, whether it's changing everything completely or sticking with everything that we have in-house with general manager, you know, Mayhew and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Ron Rivera as the head coach. Um, I think that's going to be when we can really kind of figure out what the state of this football team is long term. As far as short term goes, I'm really excited about Sam Howell. Um, I think he kid has a lot of talent and, um, you know, him having a full off season as a professional in the NFL, I think 
um, is going to pay dividends for this organization because he's going into the offseason healthy. He's got a good backup quarterback that's very knowledgeable in Jacoby Brissett. Um, we're giving him every opportunity, it seems like, to succeed. Um, and if we put more pieces around him at the offensive line and, you know, improve, you know, defensively, I feel like the sky's the limit for this football team, depending on, um, you know, just how everything else, you know, falls into place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, it, when it comes to this team, uh, they're very, very, they, they, they give me up and downs a lot. Um, what they just did the past two seasons, it, 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 it's really triggering sometimes for me. Like last year, they started off slow. They picked it up in the middle then they fell off at the end. This past year, they did the same thing. They started off slow, they picked it up in the middle, then they turned it back down again. I have, I need some level of stability, like at least some type of level of stability when it comes to this team. I mean, you, it, it's it's really upsetting when they start off one and four. Um, you, you you can't start off like that. I would like, it, I feel better if it's two and three or if it's three and two or even if it's two and two. Like I, I feel better at least that way. When it's one and four, it's like, what the heck is going on? Like in a tough division. Yeah, and and yeah, in 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 a tough division, and and I get in the middle of the season, you know, you start picking up, which is great, you know, uh, and then when when it's down to crunch time, now you're not showing up. Same thing with that Giants game that that ticked me off. Why, if you look at the roster, it it's it's night and day, at least in my opinion. When you're breaking down each position, they don't have what we have. They would love to have speaking to these Giants fans in these spaces. They would love to have what we have on this roster when it comes to when it comes to um, safeties, when it comes to especially the, re the receivers. Um, you know, anybody in the NFL, I think, as a fan, loves what we have. Now, granted, some people don't know certain players on our roster, but then when they actually sit back and break it down, this roster isn't bad. Like you said before, this is a good roster. I think if a quarterback comes in and starts on his team we can win 10 games we we all we should have won 10 games this past year um that titans game that vikings game yeah a lot of 50 game. 50 games yeah and and that giants game um they definitely should have won those games so it's but you know think, the thing is though caleb you know while they would love to have what we have they'll never admit it and that's what's great about this you know division and you know the competition of the game and that's true but not only that could all but I was talking to a Giants fan. He actually made a podcast about our, our team breaking it down. He said, if you if you take out the quarterback, the commanders have a really, really good roster. But I don't fear them because why? We don't have the, one of the most important positions in all the sports giving us stability. We don't have that. And until we have that, people are going to continue to rank us a bottom 10 team. You look at all these rankings. We're down in the bottom 10. Why? I think it's because, one, the history of the team – um, the outlook perspective of our team when it comes to ownership and front office and also the quarterback position. So I try to, when I'm talking to people about this team, let's talk about, let's talk about X's and O's. Let's talk about what's on the field. Let's not bring up the front office stuff. Let's talk about what we have personally on this football team. So right now it's like, it's at a neutral state for me. So, but I think they can trend towards the right direction. But uh, so now that that's out the way, got that out. I was getting a little triggered, but it's okay, Kadar. We will get it this happens, man. Right? Yeah, it happens. Well, let's talk about the NBA Finals. Um, now you just triggered me because you know you're bringing up basketball. <laughs> let's talk okay, about like, the NBA you Finals. You don't see eye to eye here, so you know tread lightly. No, 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 no. We're gonna talk about the playoffs. Who you got? Um, who you think gonna win? It's kind of hard for me to judge that right now, but um, I think. I really think the 76ers could go to the finals, bro. Oof. Hot take. Hot take. I'm I'm saying the Celtics already went back. The Celtics Doc Rivers? I get you it. Rivers I get it. NBA I get it. I know it's a hot take, but I'm 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 gonna support the 76ers. They and beat is playing out of his mind. Right? He's loose to bad guys here, man. Bad guy cash, you know, shout out to my boy. <laughs> shout, out. Support, shout out, shout out to my all that, man. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean it's 
it's going to be tough co coming out the East. Uh, you still got the Celtics. You still got to put respect on their name. Um, but I don't know, man. It's Embiid is playing on a whole different level. I, I think he's deserving. I think he's deserving the MVP um, award this year. Um, to be fair, I, I, I think I think he deserves that. Um, but on the West, I don't even know, man. Uh, I don't know. Would you want to say the Grizzlies? Uh, would you want to say the Nuggets? Uh, I don't know. The Kings had a really good season. Um, but I don't know. Do you think they're too young to make a push? Or you just think? Um, I think, you know, they got a very tough first round series against the LA Lakers. I actually don't yeah. have the Grizzlies coming out. Um, the no, Kings. I think the Lakers are playing. I think the Lakers are playing the Grizzlies, though. Lakers are playing yeah, the yeah, Grizzlies. the Lakers are playing the Grizzlies. I got the Lakers winning that series. And then really? Warriors, wow. Kings, you know, I got uh the Warriors winning that. I think the Kings are just too young and inexperienced. So. Yeah. So that's interesting. The Lakers. Um what Lakers in six? I got Lakers in seven. I think it's gonna go down to the wire, but I think uh it comes down to Anthony Davis. But my finals prediction, I got the Boston Celtics. Um I think Joe Mazzula is coaching his mind off right now. Like yeah, you know he he's yeah, he is. He's doing a great job with that I team. I mean, but but to be fair, could I not to cut you off? But to be fair, uh, this is this is gonna be a little nasty. But he's given the keys to the Ferrari. He just can't crash it. He already got Tatum. He got Jalen Brown. That that they got a great pickup in Malcolm Brogdon. Yeah, so, yeah, and and you know you you're right about that. He did have a you know a roster that was built to win prior to him taking over as head coach. But I don't think that should be an indictment on him. I think, you know, he's uh, not it. really ruining anything that they did well in the past. And I think, you know, he's doing a great job right now uh, with his lineups, um, just with his adjustments in game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think he's doing his part in putting everybody out there to succeed. And he had to adjust with Malcolm Brogdon, where Malcolm Brogdon wasn't there last year with Ime Udoka. So I think that's yeah. a credit to Joe Mazzula. Um, Jason Tatum, you know, this is the first Celtic to average 30 in a game. I mean, you know, I got to take the Celtics right now. They're able to switch defensively. They can. They're, they're a very, they're very and, good basketball team. So and, I and, I'll say this, and I'll say this, and I'll say this, to agree with you. Uh, me and CJ, we be, we be going at it. But I will say this. I think Jason Tatum can win an MVP. I, I think he can. Um from watching him mature as a player, he's actually – he's gotten way, way better. The only thing he really needs to work on is his playmaking. And that finals um, series, his playmaking was was terrible. That's one of the reasons why I feel like the Warriors won. He could score, but Wiggins was still on him. He averaged a, his, his shooting percentage was a little bit low, but I think if he had a little bit of playmaking ability, it would have helped him, you know, in, in that series. Yeah. So – yeah, yeah, so I got Celtics, and uh, you know, by the way, I like Jason Tatum more than I like Luka Doncic. Just, you know, something, something <laughs> it's to put okay. out there. It's okay. It's um, okay. I got grilled on Twitter for that when I was asked, you know, who I'd rather have. But you know, I think Tatum's a better player, and I look, you know, a little better now with that uh, that judgment. <laughs> okay. but, we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about that in the future because I don't want. One thing I do, y'all, is I also coach basketball, so I know ball. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. But, but, yeah, um, I like the Celtics, and I like the Phoenix Suns to represent the Western Conference. Oh, that's uh, what I forgot about. I think Kevin Durant, if he's out there, you know, Slim Reaper, I don't think Phoenix is a – you know, And Devin Booker? And Devin Booker, yeah. I, I don't think, you know, you can stop Phoenix. Uh, yeah. That's just me personally. Um, that's just a tough matchup for anybody. And, you know, I don't really think that in either conference there's a clear favorite. You know, it's very – uh, wide open and you know there's um you know contenders in both conferences so it could really go any way but yeah. if I had to pick two I mean those are the two now I'm gonna go with the Celtics and the Suns just because I feel like they have the highest ceilings and I feel okay. like they can play with anybody so okay okay I, I, I respect that I respect that but yeah man that's that's episode one y'all so you're gonna be back could all you all close this out bro yeah man Thank y'all uh, for tuning in to that team from DC podcast, Caleb and Kadar. I promise y'all, you know, we're not going to agree all the time, despite us, you know, being like minded. Uh, we have a lot of uh, things that, you know, we can uh, disagree on sometimes. You know, I'm not always going to be right. 
and Caleb's not gonna be always I'm right. Not. But I'm not. We feel like it, you know. Yeah, we feel like right. <laughs> yeah man. Yeah. So, look, yeah, yeah, man. we look, man. We stay tuned, y'all. Stay tuned. We gonna bring y'all good talk. We gonna bring y'all vibes. We gonna be chilling in here, man. Y'all come on, listen to the podcast, man. We gonna be vibing with y'all. We talking ball. We don't peace and love, you. beautiful people. Peace and love, y'all. Now keep it 100. That wasn't so bad now, was it? Spread the word. Because like Dion say, we coming. Thanks for listening to the Team from DC podcast. We truly appreciate your time. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel at redzoneinthelab.com. And also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can download our podcast at your usual podcast platforms. Also visit redzoneinthelab.com. See you next time. Gang gang, I'll let you boy.